just to show where we left off in the last video, pretty simple. There's just two big blocks and they have collision shapes. And then if I grab anywhere on the screen and pull, release, the ball just bounces around the screen. It collides with the outside barrier just because of that collision shape that we kind of wrapped around it. And then these individual shapes, these Polygon 2Ds, they have their own collision shapes as well. Kind of all within the static body 2D node. The thing that I want to add to this really quickly is just the concept of a life for the player. So if I want to bounce around the screen, let's imagine that we're going for some kind of goal up here. And we can add that in this video too as well. If we're going for some kind of goal, then uh, we don't need to reach that goal just by randomly bouncing the thing around the screen and then eventually it'll get there, right? We want to make sure that the player is exhibiting some type of control or understanding of how things will bounce and how to get to that goal. So we can just give the player a limit on how many times that it can bounce. So we'll say bounce limit. We can actually export this as well. Export var bounce limit. And we can set it equal to four. Now, if we want to detect, okay, so the reason that I exported there is because if I look at player in the inspector, we'll now have that bounce limit pulled out into the script variables and we can adjust it from out here. But if we think about how are we going to detect the bounces on the collision shapes on the edge of the screen and the blocks, we just have a signal with this rigid body 2D. If you look under the nodes, uh, or if you look under the node tab and you look at the signals, you'll see this body entered signal. That's exactly what we want. So if we just connect that to the player script that we already have, player body entered. Uh, we don't really know what the body is, I guess. Uh, I mean, we have a reference to it and we can check what it is, but for now we know that we're going to collide with something. So if we print, well, we can just test it. We don't have to debug right now. Let's just say every time we hit, let's assume that this works. And we'll say every time we hit, we want to decrease the bounce limit by one. I guess actually what we should do is say, really what we should do is we'll have the bounce limit and then we'll also track number of bounces number of bounces equals zero and instead of decreasing something we'll just increase the number of bounces plus equal to one that way whenever the player is spawned it'll always we always know that it'll be at zero bounces we don't have to worry about resetting that so number of bounces plus equal to zero and now in the process function we can always check if number uh well we don't have to do it in process because we know that we've increased it, so we should only really have to check once prior to the next bounce whether or not it's higher than what we want the bounce limit to be. So if number of bounces equals or is greater than, not question mark, not question mark. If number of bounces is greater than bounce limit, get parent dot remove child self and then q free so we're basically going to let the player kill itself i think this should work so let's just try it so i'm going to bounce around the screen once it bounces four times it disappears it disappeared exactly on that last bounce so that works pretty well I, actually that's the first time i've actually played out with that function so i'm glad it worked the first time and obviously you can increase the number of bounces depending on increase or decrease depending on the difficulty of the level so that's the one thing that I wanted to add. So we've added kind of this bounce control. Let's go ahead and bump that up to seven just for now. The other thing I wanted to add was a goal uh, for the player to shoot for. And I think we can use the same player sprite for now until we think of something better. But let's add an area to, well, we'll add a sprite. I don't know. I don't know if it should be an area 2D or a sprite first but we'll add an area 2d with so if you look at these i always recommend looking at the little things because they kind of show you what you need this node has no shape so it can't collide or interact with other objects so we need to add a collision shape collision oops collision shape 2d and that also has no shape but first we need to add a sprite to this sprite and I guess we will just use the player sprite, but we'll change the color. And we'll, we'll use something better eventually. 
I'm going to lock this with this little button up here. Make sure the objects children are not selectable. That way I'll be able to grab it and drag it around. And let's put the, we'll say that the goal is right there. But we'll change it to make it look a little bit different. So under visibility, we can use this modulate and we can at least make it some kind of, I don't know, let's make it a green color. And then if I run this, at least there's this green block up there. Still doesn't, this doesn't look very good, but for right now it's it's not really supposed to. For the sprite, let's bump the size up just a little bit under transform. Let's do scale of two, two. That way the goal is just a little bit easier to hit. Oh, we still haven't added a shape to the collision shape 2D. So we can just do circle shape. And then if we zoom in on this, you'll be able to see that shape. We can actually put that after the sprite so you'll be able to see it. If we click on the collision shape 2D, we can drag that out. And we'll save there. So that should be that should be the goal that we want. That's that's where we want to go. Now what I'm interested in seeing is whether or not the player will actually bounce off of the off of this before we add any logic to it. No, I think we should be okay. So we want to detect when that area comes in. Or we with the area, we want to detect when a body enters it and that body is the player. So this area, we'll call this the goal. We'll add a script to this area, 2D. And then we'll attach a node signal and we'll do body entered. We'll connect that to itself, the goal. And then we just check uh, print, we'll say print body dot name. And hopefully it will be player if I can actually hit it. Well, it keeps dying. Let's bump this up for now. We could also add in some kind of uh, tag, like a debug tag, if able to die. Well, if debug, well, what should I say? If debug equals false. If if number of bounces is greater than bounce limit and debug equals false. But we want debug to be true, so we're just saying we're going to debug some things right now, so we don't want the player to die. Okay, so it's printing player down here at the bottom whenever we go through the goal, and we went through it multiple times. So if, if we go through the goal, then really... I won't do too much more with this right now, but we would really just print uh, victory or something like that. And, you know, something would happen on the screen to indicate that we've beaten the level and now we can move on to the next level. And obviously it wouldn't be this easy to just get to the goal just by bouncing uh, one time. Well, maybe it's not that easy. Okay, so we, we hit the goal a couple times. So that's two things so far in this video. The the idea of the player health for the, the, the ball or whatever you want to call the player and then a goal that we're reaching for. Uh, the game still doesn't look very good, obviously, and that's because we're still working on the functionality. I'm not too worried about improving things significantly until most of the gameplay works and we have levels and things like that. I guess the last thing I can add is let's just go ahead and add a particle system. And we'll see how long that takes. So let me go to the player scene. So we're back in the player scene. Make sure that you're not adding this within the game under here because this is really an instanced scene. We want to click on that or find the player in the scenes folder and actually add things here. And if you add child node, you can find particle. Particle. You can either use CPU particles 2D or particles 2D. The process is, is relatively the same, but... Uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to add particle 2D. And then once you add that node, you kind of have to come in here and add. Well, you can look at this warning. A material to process particles is not assigned, so no behavior is imprinted. You just come under process material, just like it says no, or it says there's no material to process the particles. Here we have the process material. Just go new particles material, and then it starts emitting right here. Emitting's on. You can turn that off or on. There's a few things that I normally do to this. So if you click on that particle 
the actual particle material that you just created. You can change a lot of different settings within it. The first thing that I'm going to take away is gravity. I'll make that zero. So now the particles are just spawning right there in the middle. And then there's a few things I normally do, and I can't remember what they all are right now, but there's a way to get it to... Really, you can just play with this and make it whatever you want, to be honest. We can set the initial velocity to something like 50. It kind of shoots out to the side. If we look at the emission shape, we can change that from a point to a sphere. That way, they spawn kind of all within the shape rather than at a single point, exactly like it says. And that's not terrible. I mean, that seems fine. In order to not get the particles to all shoot out to the right, I change the spread or I just grab it and pull it all the way to the top, 180. Now they're kind of shooting out all over the place. If I want to, if I want all the particles to appear at the same time, outside of this particle material at the top, there's this explosiveness. If you pull that all the way to one, they all appear at the same time. That might actually be what we want because we want the shape or the, we want the particles to emit whenever we hit the wall, right? So let's one shot this so we, we click this it says one shot and i think i'm starting to think that there might be a better way to do this but i think it should be okay i think i think we could work this out but, but we'll just try it so i changed a couple of these things and if you click on emitting now it just kind of spawns this little burst of particles i think you have to wait for it to completely finish before you hit it again and it will actually work so we'll try this. My only concern, well, we'll see how it works. So whenever we bounce, we want to set particles 2D to emitting. Okay, they're there. I see them. I saw them at least once. Let's, let's bump them up in size. So if you come down here to scale, you can scale them up. Let's scale them up to four. See what they look like. So that's a little bit more noticeable. They're only appearing part of the time. Okay, so I had a couple of concerns about this. One of the concerns is that uh, it's emitting is still set to true, which means it's only going to emit once. Also, the particles follow the player. They don't spawn and stay where the contact actually occurred. And then the other concern, what was the other concern? Oh, my other concern was that with the particle system here, if the in within the player, if the bounces are occurring all within, what am I trying to say? If, if they're all occurring within a very short amount of time, then I'm worried that it won't be able to switch between emitting and not emitting uh, fast enough. So really what needs to be done is this particle system this particle system needs to be pulled out into its own scene. And then whenever there's a collision, the player essentially needs to spawn a particle system of whatever you want, a particle 2D node, at that collision point. And then they'll do their thing, and then the player can just leave them behind. And it'll spawn as many as it needs to, based on however many bounces. So I think I'm going to look at that in the next video. This has been pretty short and not a whole lot of information, but I think we did some cool stuff with the life of the player and the goal. Uh, I really want to start, if I'm going to keep working on this, I feel like I really need to start cleaning up the aesthetics and really decide on color scheme and things like that, or else the project's just not very attractive right now. Uh, but good functionality so far. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you learned something new or just enjoyed watching, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video.